Well, it was a bit of an improvement because, um, while I still feel like the show, you know, has departed from how it originally was like, and, um, I don't feel as close to the characters as I did for the first few seasons, this season was less depressing, I felt like more stuff happened, it didn't feel as comic booky. And, um, I did get a little more, um, nervous for the characters in a couple of instances, and a few issues that I had with the characters were fixed, because, um, Jimmy, for instance, like with Lois, the longer that I saw him, the more he began to grow on me, especially once, um, he began to, um, truly get someplace with Chloe. It's not so much that he, you know, converted her, it's just that, you know, she began to respond more positively towards him, because, you know, the longer she spends time with him, the more she realizes, I can see something going here. And, um, now I'm starting to think that actually Chloe, you know, won't get killed off here, because, um, well, obviously Lionel got killed off, he was the other character I was wondering about, but also, I realized that since Lucy Lane uh, probably isn't going to be a recurring character here, that gets rid of Jimmy's uh, main love interest that I know of, so that leaves Chloe. And it'd be nice to see her, um, you know, get something working out for her, because although she hasn't had, oh my god, a lot of bad stuff happen to her on this show, you know, i just like to see things work out for her, given, you know, all that she's been through and all she's done to try and help everybody. Yeah. So it was nice that they fixed that with Jimmy, and, um, it was nice to show that at the end, Lionel, um, truly did say that, you know, he wanted to help Clark, but, you know, it's the hindsight being 2020, and that it was only after he died that Clark and Chloe go, you know, despite all the problems that he did, that statement that he kept telling us at the end, turns out it was true. Yeah, and, you know, we finally get the moment where Lex and Lionel finally completely shift, even though, let's be honest, Lionel was not all good, and Lex is not all bad, because there's a big part of him, as is revealed at the end, that he believes he's actually doing the right thing, but you get the idea that you know, Lex has finally shifted his to being close to, um, Clark's main antagonist, because you can't call Clark Superman here, because it's Clark, even when he's talking to Kara, he's like, it's Clark, okay, I'm not kal -El, it's Clark, oh yeah, and let's talk about Kara here, um, well, at first I didn't like her, but as she gets, you know, acclimatized to Earth, we learn more about her, yeah, I grew to like her a little bit more, but, um, towards the end, um, I began to get a little bit confused as to whether or not she was, you know, 100% with Clark and everything. Now, granted, uh, Brainiac slash James Masters did impersonate her right at the end there, but, um, I still can't help but feel like, you know, there's gonna be a part of jor that factors into this, even though, um... The series is trying to really shove it at us that um, her f father and jor hated each other. Oh yeah, and because we actually got to see um, Kara's father, you know, I really feel like now we finally get to see a true entity from uh, Krypton, even though we did get to see a couple of Zod's minions, but, you know, minions? Yeah, I don't really know about that, yeah. But I gotta bring up a bone of contention because... If this really is Kara, who the heck was that at the end of the third season? Okay, okay, okay. I do remember that Jonathan rushed into the caves with, like, a fire on the, the chick, stating that her name was, like, Brittany or something, that she went missing, and that Anzo Jarrell had her on the control. But then why would you try to pass someone off as Kara when the real Kara was out there. Now, of course, and possibly Kara's father didn't tell jor which based on their relationship, probably is actually very likely, but just... <laughs> what? And, like, why wasn't there a line of dialogue where Terrence Stamp explained this situation? Like, 
I would have liked to have it, had an explanation for that. I really would have. Do I think she was a bad addition? No, but I do feel like it's kind of unnecessary. But if they end up using her, you know, in the remaining seasons of this show, I bet they can make up for it and that I like her a little bit more because, yeah, she. It's not that she grew on me, it's just that I li disliked her less as the season went on. Not that I truly hated her, but. Not that I really fall into her. Well, we'll have to see, you know? Yeah. Um, what else to mention here? Oh, yeah, giving um, Pete that one-off appearance, that was nice, because, you know, he departed on kind of a bad note, albeit it was a somewhat justifiable reason, but you, you just got the idea that he left and just... It was bad, so yeah, bring him back for one episode and have him make a little bit more peace with Clark and then... Just send him off on a much better note. That was really nice. I appreciate that. Um, I think the only real thing I have to talk about left now is Lana. Um, I'm kind of torn here because... Although I didn't like her too much this season, at the same time, I understand. You know, because she's just had... All kinds of problems that she's been through, being taken advantage of by the Luthers, Clark not trusting her and her having to do her own detective work to figure out about his abilities, you know, even though it, this season cemented that the feelings that they have for each other are honest and can withstand a lot. But at the same time, you know, given other things that she did in her shady attitude, I just... Hmm... Can't feel 100% with her, because, like, even when Brainiac, you know, impaled her and left her in a lobotomic state, for lack of a better term, um, I'll admit I was kind of shocked by that, but I didn't feel too much, and I'm somewhat disappointed by that, because, you know, given how nothing... She hadn't been truly brought back by the end of the season, and then we had that video message that she left for Clog, although um, I wonder exactly why they decided to give it to him at the end. I forget that it didn't catch that little bit of dialogue. Maybe they are going to fix her. Hmm. I mean, like... It's possible that they don't fix her because, you know, as I've said before, um, Lois is supposed to be Clark's main love interest, but given how this does have quite a few differences from typical Superman lore, maybe actually Clark and Lois won't end up together because, you know, other than those crazy shenanigans of season four and then at the time when she kissed Clark believing that, um, he was all of her, even though clearly they both liked it, <laughs> nothing really has hap happened uh, between them, yeah. Hmm. I mean, like, granted, Clark was genuinely with Lana for a lot of it, and Lois was, you know, just going off doing her thing, but... Yeah. I'm starting to have doubts as to whether anything's gonna happen there, not that it matters, because I'm probably gonna be done with this show by the time you guys see this. Um, oh yeah, and bringing up Jarrell one more time, um, while he's still causing problems for Clark, um, I do think that there was a little bit more justification for it in this season, although I can't truly explain why, it's just my own subjective viewing on it. Well, I gotta admit, this review felt a lot better than the last few, I'm impressed by that, yeah. See ya.